everybody and welcome to a sheepish look at Elix. My name is Gena and today we are looking at an RPG by Piranha Bytes, the devs behind the Gothic and Risen RPG series. Uh, this dev studio kind of has a cult following because apparently all their games share uh, a lot of similarities in regards to game mechanics and atmosphere and all that. I, this is my first game by them though, so I kind of came into this with an open mind, not really expecting anything. Uh, and I've been pleasantly surprised, I'm 70 hours into the game now. I, I've already beaten it twice, <laughs> I'm doing the different factions and all that. It's a lot of fun. The game comes with a lot of problems though, which I will get to of course. Uh, but I've been having a blast so far. Alright, so the first thing you might think is that the game is set in a medieval kind of uh, environment. You've got these straw huts, you've got, I've got like armor and an axe and all that. Uh, well, that's only part of the game. <laughs> so I'll give you a quick rundown of just kind of the story that's laid out to you in the first cutscene of the game. Just so you kind of understand, and I'll just run through this environment so you can see the... Just differences in environments and just the variety in this game. So this is the city of the clerics. These guys believe in technology. Uh, okay, so the main uh, thing you need to know about the story is a comet hit this planet at some point and uh, basically destroyed civilization as we know it. Uh, and with the comet came a material called Elix and all these different factions believe in using it in a different way. So these guys over here, the clerics, uh, they use it to kind of fuel their technology, either their plasma weapons or their mechs and stuff like that. And yeah, that's how they developed their technology, they believe in preserving old technology, kind of like the Brotherhood of Steel from Fallout, if you've ever played that, it's kind of comparable to that. Uh, the little twist on these guys, and this is what I love about this game, is I spent 40 hours in the game trying to consider, like, who the hell do I join? Because you can only join one faction per playthrough. Uh, and I was struggling, like, ah, man, they're all cool in one way, but they also have a downside in another way. And this is the downside, in my opinion. These guys are, um, they're, they're, although they believe in all this futuristic technology and all that stuff, they have a religion, and they have a god, and they have a prophet. Um, and so they convert people. They basically use Jedi mind tricks. It's called suggestion, in quotation marks. So they just kind of suggest that someone should come and uh, believe in this god. <laughs> and basically, you kind of mind wash people, uh, brainwash people into believing this stuff. Um, so it's very interesting because they also do think that they're doing good and all that. They're not like evil. And on the other side of the spectrum, you've got the Berserkers here. These guys believe all old technology should be thrown into the pit, destroyed. You can be exiled or murdered if you use technology here. Look, I, someone might comment on this as well. Let's see. Stop messing around with that thing. See, they don't like when you use technology near them. <laughs> I don't know why they give me a free pass. Uh, in this playthrough, I went, I decided to go Berserker. That's why you can see I've got their armor and all that stuff. Um, but, I mean, it would be pretty frustrating if you just couldn't jetpack around their village just because they don't believe in it. Like, just, just suspension of disbelief for a second, right? Um, but yeah, these guys don't believe in technology. They use Elix to create mana. I don't know if I'm going to piss someone off by using this, but I'm just going to shoot fireball at this hut as uh, my companion <laughs> puts her ass in our camera. There you go. So you can see I can, like, burn this person's hut down. Not really, but, you know, <laughs> I can uh, try poison people with poison mana. Uh, so yeah, they use Elix to convert into mana, and uh, they also believe in planting, you can see all these small seeds down here, these little balls, those are uh, growing up to become world hearts, which they plant throughout the world, and it spreads its nature throughout. Uh, so that's what made me join them, I kind of really like the idea of trying to restore the planet, although I disagreed with the technology. Um, but that's the cool thing about the game, you don't necessarily have to, I mean, I pissed off the Berserkers so much, because they, their quests to join them, for example, are like, oh, Go kill this guy because he used a plasma gun. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna fucking do that. So I actually helped him escape instead. Um, and I pissed them off, but the game ultimately lets you join every single faction anyway, even if you kind of work against them. As long as you do their main missions uh, in a certain way. And the third faction over here, you've got the Outlaws. These guys are basically like the Mad Maxi Fallout dudes. Uh, they all kind of make shit out of scrap metal. <laughs> They've got uh, machine guns. I mean, you can see this guy's also got a melee weapon. Uh, but they've got, like, more, you know, typical gun stuff that we have now, basically, that use ammunition. Um, yeah, these guys are pretty much in it just for profit. They use Elix to just kind of sell and buy stuff. Uh, they rob people. <laughs> just, like, typical, you know, just bandit stuff. So, you know, kind of if you're, if you're a free soul and you don't really want to follow any rules, like, oh, no, no technology or no, no religion, then you just come here and you kind of live your own life. Everybody is their own um, master, to a certain extent. So, you know, kind of the downfall here is uh, you're an asshole to everyone else in the world, but also maybe, like, you know, you're told that you're free, but you still gotta pay uh, your taxes to the fucking leader of this place. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a pretty interesting. I really like the mix of the factions. They did it quite well. 
And then fourthly, you've got the final faction, which you can't really join, but you know, you kind of can. Uh, they're called the Albs, and that's where your character starts as at the beginning of the game. Uh, so these guys are basically like the opposing force to all these other main three factions. Uh, these guys consume Elix, they lose all of their emotion because of it, so that's a pretty interesting aspect. Uh, and basically they're all working to just kill everyone, convert, throw everyone into converter machines, which Elix uh, is extracted from them, extract Elix from the world, uh, and just give it all to the Albs, just fuck everyone else. And so they become super powerful because of it, but then they lose kind of the emotion. Um, and so that's kind of the karma system in this game, more or less. So you can see over here in the bottom right corner, my cold is currently neutral. Um, but if you if you go into conversations, depending on how you react, uh, depending on some stuff that you consume, like certain potions, if you consume Elix, then you'll become more cold, uh, so less emotional. So yeah, the whole game is basically you trying to kind of find your purpose uh, within these three factions, but also you get the opportunity to kind of, do I want to go back to my roots and become an Alb again or not? Uh, and that basically depends on your reactions to, you know, everything in the world. Alright, so let's go over to my other save where I'm a cleric. Uh, the game does have speech checks, by the way, so depending on your cold, you might have an extra option or not. Uh, if you're emotional or not, uh, depending on if you have the suggest power with clerics, you can kind of brainwash people and make them do what you want. Depending on uh, if you're a strong fighter, then maybe you can convince someone like, hey, you can like blackmail them, like, uh, oh, give me more money for the job I did to you or I'll kick your ass, you know, but that's only if you're strong enough in combat. Uh, but yeah, I'll go into more into the skill trees and all that stuff and the inventory. Uh, let's just get a little bit of action, right? Let's kind of spice things up. I'm going to do a quest, I'm going to do some combat. Uh, show you a bit of that and then we can go into everything else. Uh, you're not restricted to, like, you can see I'm a cleric here, by the way, but I've got, like, a, an axe with me. I've also got this plasma gun and I've got uh, cleric powers, like, I can shoot this black hole. This Let me just quick save really quick because I'm going to piss these guys off. Boom, black hole. Everyone's pissed off at me now. I died. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, you can kind of mess around, but uh, ultimately, to get good armor and good weapons, uh, you need to join a faction, which, by the way, in maybe the first, like, three or four hours, I would get one shot by pretty much any enemy. You could do nothing against these guys. The game's uh, difficulty curve is very harsh, uh, and you pretty much need to just kind of always have a companion with you to carry your ass through everything. You can't do anything, man, anything. And so it's really important to just start getting weapons, start getting armor. And uh, obviously joining a faction really helps with that because they give you loads of strong stuff. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's quite satisfying. You kind of get this uh, rewarding feeling when you like, you come back. And I, I was literally getting one shot, literally. One hit, I would die. And then I would come back to the same area with awesome armor and awesome weapons. And I'd be like, come here, you motherfucker, and like kill them instantly. So it gives you a pretty cool feeling, uh, although because of that, the difficulty feels kind of artificial. It's not really skill-based. Honestly, the Berserker playthrough um, was probably the hardest so far because you're stuck with a melee weapon for the most part. I mean, you can go mage and you can go uh, bow and arrow and stuff, but uh, I decided to go melee. And yeah, you kind of struggle later on in the game. Everyone else has weapons and <laughs> you have to get close to them and it kind of sucks. So far, Clerics has been much easier because I've got plasma weapons and all that. Um, so yeah, it's a bit artificial because you can dodge, you can block, but um, yeah, everyone is just does more damage than you and takes more damage. Anyway, let's get to the discussions. You can see now kind of the quality of the voice acting and all that. Leggett, there is work to do. That's why I'm here. Good. It is your responsibility to locate new initiates for our order. Others will follow our example, just as you did. I will do as Kalan instructs. Your devotion speaks well of you. You may have to go deep into enemy territory to find suitable candidates. So, make sure you have the right supplies before you leave. Once there, I'd advise you to avoid more densely populated areas. It will be safer, particularly as some of those in the towns have been brainwashed into their cause. Some candidates can be persuaded. But with others, you may need to break their will, or use force to initiate them. I know that may feel wrong, but remember, you are saving them. Once you have persuaded an initiate to join us, an escort will bring them back to the Horde. Alright, so, <laughs> you can see their, like, messed up mentality here. 
uh, I like how other people are brainwashed by just living in their place, and uh, I'm not. I'm totally not brainwashing them by forcing them to join, right? Um, so you can see, I don't know if you noticed, it popped up at some point, it said, someone likes that. So they kind of picked up this little, like, I don't know if the older Piranha Bytes games did this, but I know, like, Telltale does this, for example, where it's like, oh, this person likes this thing that you said, this person, I don't like that. It's immersion breaking to me. I can get it from their reaction. I can understand from their personality. I don't need to be told they like this and they don't like this. Uh, especially when it comes to the person I'm talking to, right? And a lot of the times, like, you might kill someone, or you might do something, and then the game says, this decision will have far-reaching consequences. Like, okay, don't tell me that. Just let me discover it on my own. To me, that's pretty stupid. I don't know, maybe other people aren't bothered by it. Some people might be. Um, one, th one place I do forgive this text is sometimes your companions, depending on who you have. So I've got this chick with me. She's a berserker mage. She's pretty much a nice guy. So um, if I'm nice to someone, it'll say, like, uh, Kaya likes that. And that's a little bit more forgiving because she might not necessarily butt into the discussion, so I might not know if she enjoyed my opinion or not. Um, but yeah, sometimes depending on, like, you might have a companion with you, they might disagree with what you just did in the conversation, and so they're, they'll be less fond of you because of it. So I do like that, and sometimes, uh, depending on the companion you have, they might butt into the conversation and say something relevant. Maybe they'll talk to the NPC that you're actually talking to. So it's cool, it's actually quite personalized, and even when you go throughout the world, your characters might say something, your companions might say something about the place you're in. So I do like that. Um, so let's see, who does he want me to recruit? Who do you want me to recruit? We want the brightest and the best. But we'll settle for the available and the willing. I've selected three men that our drones have identified. Connor, Ryder, and Galar. The first two should be in Tavar, and the third man in Edan. I'll transmit their coordinates to your adjutor. Alright, so we've got our mission. So here's our first look at the quest log. Quite messy. By the way, I should point out, I am playing the PC Steam version of the game, um, but because I was playing a Berserker playthrough, I was actually using a controller all the time for melee. I just kind of preferred it. But now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using Cleric, so I might probably be aiming with the mouse instead. Um, but this quest log, man, it's pretty messy. So you can see here, uh, this is probably going to be a good example of what I want to show you. You can see this is kind of like a small little, oh, I'm doing this quest uh, in the service of Kalan, whatever, and then it divides into this smaller quest over here. So, I've got to mark this on the map. Divine Mission, right? Now I can see on the map, it shows me, okay, these are the three places I need to go to, these yellow, little yellow markers. And the orange one <clears throat> is the quest giver. So sometimes you beat a quest, and your the next step is, okay, go report it. But the yellow, the yellow pings still stay there, as if I still need to, let's say, go and recruit these people. But I don't necessarily need to recruit these people, because I've already recruited them. So instead, I just need to use my own brain. Okay, I'm going to go to orange and uh, turn it back in. And that's okay. Like, I got used to this after a while, but it was quite confusing at the beginning. And I'm sure a lot of other people struggled. I've talked talk to some friends who have played the game. They also felt the same way. And same with, I can also mark this. This is like the, you know, the main, like, branch that it comes out of. And you can see, it's still telling me to talk to these guys. Look, perfect example right here. It's telling me to talk to this guy, Balder, that I, I already got the quest from him. But it's still marked as a quest. Uh, so stuff like this is messy. There is, by the way, a lot of stuff to read uh, for lore building. So if you're into that, you're very lucky. There's a lot of text to find around the place. Alright, so let's go do this guy's first mission, shall we? So he wants me to convert... Oh, look, I've already unlocked... Uh, you need to unlock teleporters, by the way, uh, to fast travel around the place. It's not like some other games where you can kind of fast travel to a location. You need to find the teleporters. They're quite scarce and pretty hard to find, honestly, so I actually just looked up a map online because I was tired of traveling for maybe an hour, avoiding enemies for the first 10 hours of the game. Like, I can't kill anything. I've been struggling so far. I just want to go back and heal and stuff, but I can't because I need to find a teleporter. So I just looked it up. Which, by the way, you can see on the waypoint, the, the teleporter is like pinkish purple. Yeah, well, look at this. I'm going to set up a custom marker right here. Yeah, it's also pinkish purple. You can see it's darker purple at the top of the screen. But come on, like, you couldn't have done another color. Okay, so first I'm going to show you the melee combat, actually, really quick. You can see the bottom left corner, as I attack, that stuff kind of uh, goes... It increases, right, the little bar. So if I just keep mashing the button, you can see it kind of just keeps stopping like that. Uh, but if I time it, so you can see the bar fills up. If I time it when it hits the white marker, boom boom, like that, then I can like build a combo. And if I go past that middle bit, you can see I do this little special attack. Um, 
And by the way, I went to controller because I personally really couldn't get into the melee combat with mouse. Like, it's left click for light attack, E for heavy attack. Not awful, but you know, I just preferred it with a controller, whatever. So that's how melee combat works. Uh, unfortunately, you can do uh, light hand. You can do one-handed weapons, so that you can also have a shield in the other hand. You can also do two-handed weapons. Unfortunately, this is the kind of glitches I'm talking about with the game. If you do four light light attacks, one, two, three, four. That fourth swing, fourth light attack with a double-handed axe specifically, the fourth attack will do nothing. No, <laughs> never. It will never do damage, and that's broken. So that means I was always forced to do light, light light and then heavy there you go oh, okay whatever you get what I'm saying um, so yeah that's broken <laughs> and that's kind of just kind of a little example of uh, how broken the game is it's just like small stuff every now and again um, so with uh, berserker spells so like you can just do you know fireballs and all that stuff or you can just do um, cleric spells you can do like force push I don't know different stuff pretty self-explanatory and same with a pulse rifle very obvious. You can also change the shooting type. So I'm gonna go to... You can see it's like a little small explosion thing and then this one... I don't even know what that does, but there you go. <laughs> By the way, something to point out, you get a few, maybe five, six companions throughout the game. Uh, and they're actually all pretty interesting. Uh, this is probably the one with the worst personality, in my personal opinion, anyway. Uh, although they all have their own, like, quests, kind of, a little bit like Mass Effect, to do something personal for them. Uh, and they've all been quite interesting, I've been really pleased with that, so... That's good to know. I, I kind of, over time, grew to care about my companions, which is pr a good thing. You should care about your companions, right? Also, because of the harsh nature of the game, you pretty much have to always be quick saving and quick loading and stuff, because... Sometimes if you die, even, like, let's say, on a boss, it won't, the game doesn't give you a checkpoint at the beginning of the fight, or anything like that, no. You might load, like, like you'll die and then you have to load, maybe, 10 minutes before you fought the boss. So always quick save, pretty much between, before every single discussion or fight or whatever. Which is a bad system in my opinion, they should have some sort of checkpointing at least. It does autosave every now and again, but not as often as it should. Alright, so let's try talk to this guy, I'll convert him. I'll save the trouble of looking around. This place has already been picked clean, so don't waste your time here. You'll do better elsewhere. And what did you find? A few bits of scrap, a few shards. Nothing worth the time I've spent. I got lucky because someone had stashed their finds over there. So at least I got some reward. Here, take some water. You might as well not go home completely empty-handed. And don't worry, it's clean. Any animal that tries to piss in the well here ends up fried. Right, enough with the talk. I need to feed my mutt. See, I don't want to brainwash this guy. I'm gonna ask him if he wants to join. If he doesn't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do it because he's a nice guy. Like, he doesn't owe me anything. That's just personally how I play the game. You can also play as a complete asshole if you want to, which is always a good choice, right? Also, something pretty funny about the game, before I actually try to do all that, you can uh, pickpocket people if you get the right ability. You can see I stole a cup from him. <laughs> and you can steal people things from people's homes and stuff. I mean, if they see you, you do get caught. And uh, they attack you and pr and kill you, which um, stealth is a little bit broken in my opinion in this game because I mean, I'm not sure if this does count as this guy's house. Let's see if I try to loot stuff. I think I've already been here. Yeah, I've already been here and looted this place. <laughs> uh, if you loot stuff, it says forbidden next to it. So if someone sees you, they will get pissed off. Uh, but if they don't see you, you can pick it up and like you don't lose any karma. You don't like become a famous thief or anything like that. Like I think Fallout has this. Um, a system where you lose karma for stealing because you know it's it's kind of evil um, and it's kind of shitty because like I said they instantly attack you and kill you if they see you once you don't go to prison or anything like that like in let's say oblivion so you pretty much are forced to if you want to stealth you quick save pretty much before you pickpocket anything because if you don't like I'm gonna say I'm not gonna save and then I'm gonna pickpocket something from a guy like in the berserker town and then, oh, they'd start attacking me, so I'm either forced to die, or attack them, but then everyone's gonna hate me in the city. So, like, it's really broken, like, there's no real consequence. I mean, it's a very, it's too serious of a consequence to be caught stealing. So yeah, I think stealing is a little bit broken in this game. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's talk to this guy. I mean, it's funny, like, I can steal, I stole pretty much from everyone, even though I was helping them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How did you train that jackal? I didn't. Someone else did. When I found him, he was chewing on a sword. Either his owner had abandoned him, or had been killed. In any case, he's harmless. <laughs> Not like the other beasts around here. That's why I decided to take him with me. Big daft oaf that he is. 
So uh, that's that happens a lot more commonly than you might think. I've seen so many scenes where I'm talking to someone and the weapon is just in their way, covering their face. So you can see this guy's voice acting. It's not top notch. It's not awful either. Uh, it's kind of varied. <laughs> um, some people are much better. I want to show you this audio dialogue that I found, uh, which was really terrible in my opinion. Oh, hang on. I hear something. You hear this? Yeah, he's peeing. And uh, people pee for like 10 minutes straight, and it's like the loudest noise in the game. Listen to that, it's like he's pissing in my ear. <laughs> it's really funny. It's so silly. And people like blow snot out of their nose onto the ground, and sometimes you'll see people like four people do it at once. It's like, what is this world? Everybody's disgusting. By the way, this, you can sit. I hate it. I wish there was a mod to disable it. Because there's no benefit. You can't even interact with things while sitting. And many times I just try to talk to someone and I have to accident I accidentally click and sit and then it's just I watch this shitty animation. It's awful! Why is the what's the point of sitting? There's no point. I hate it. Uh, and by the way, yeah, I was talking about the quality of voice acting. Sometimes people will like drone on and on. Like you discuss something with someone and they're like, okay, go kill this guy for me. And you're like, okay. And then they're like, okay, uh, thanks for killing this guy for me. And then your guy, you have to like accept. You don't, you don't get the quest at that point. You've already said, okay, your character said, okay, but you don't get the quest. And then you have to do another choice in the discussion, which is like, okay, I'm going to kill this guy. And he's like, okay, thank you for killing this guy for me. Like stop repeating. And it doesn't happen often, but. It happens often enough to like get annoying, or sometimes just like you'll hear people um, uh, like I heard w uh, my main character talk about a dead body that I found and he's like, hmm, this must have been George, hmm, this must have been George, like I heard both takes in one audio dialogue, like they didn't cut it out, and it's just, <laughs> I don't know, you'll see stuff like this every now and again in the game. Uh, or even there's this robot that I talk to who sounds like a robot, very robotic, even more than this. And then at some point I'm talking to him and he's like, oh yeah, okay, dude. No sound effect, no filter, no robot filter, nothing. He just sounds like a normal ass dude. Yeah, there's stuff every now and again which just makes me laugh. It's not, none of it is game breaking at least, you know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, let's get on with this. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm trying to sell the game to you. The way it is, right? I'm trying to be honest. This video is probably the longest, cheapest look I've ever done, by the way. But there's a lot to talk about, man. It's a big RPG. All right, so let's try and finally recruit this guy. The clerics need help. Help? With what? Supplies? You think with their machines, they wouldn't need help from anyone. So, come on. What's their problem? It's obvious you're one of them, so speak up. I'm here to find suitable recruits to join them. Ignadon needs men as well as machines. We need help from you. You've been selected by our scouts. Uh, I mean, yeah. We need help from you. I'll just skip that. We already you heard expect it. me to offer help to Ignadon? You think I'll help out just like that? I'm going to have to think before I make a decision like that. What's there to think about? Well, there's Snuffles for a start. I won't be able to take him with me, will I? And I won't just abandon him. I could probably find one of the Duke's men to look after him, but it wouldn't be cheap. They don't do anything for charity. And I don't want to think about what they do to him if they find out I've joined the clerics. This should be enough to care for snuffles without people asking questions, so I can even just give him some charity money. You don't need to worry about him, so I can do a suggestion. Uh, I can't pay- let's just be a good guy. This should be enough to get care for snuffles without people asking questions. <laughs> you must need men if you're prepared to pay that much. But, fair enough. I'm in. Wait here, and you'll be collected. They'll take you to the Horde and explain everything to you there. Good. Then I'll just wait. See you in Ignadon, comrade. It's so funny to hear my character going, This should be money for snuffles. <laughs> like that name from such a gruff voice. Uh, right, I forgot to show you the bad voice acting from this. I can't get through. The streets are completely full. People everywhere. What is that? A mob is forming back there. What? This looks bad. I have to go. That sounds so bad to me. That's such bad voice acting. There's like no emotion in what he's saying. So you can see, I'm being chased by something currently. These guys will pretty much instantly destroy me, so <laughs> I've got to run. Uh, I do like in this game that you've got to kind of pick your fights. Be careful of who you fight. Uh, like, I mean, even in like dialogue situations, someone like might challenge you. I mean, maybe they're gonna ask you like, "Hey, pay pay up, or else I kill you," right? And you've got to actually consider it in this game. Most games, like in Elder Scrolls, it's like, "Now, nah, fuck you! I'm not gonna pay your dumbass fee," and you kill them because you can. It's easy. But in this game, not so much. 
uh, you've got to consider maybe paying these guys or else they will wreck you. You can see, by the way, this is the icon for the companion. <clears throat> this is another little annoyance I have in the game. And you saw what my waypoint looked like on the map, right? A lot of the times, I look on the map and I can't see where I'm facing because my companion icon is right on me. I don't need to see this. It's frustrating. Like, my, my icon should always be on top. Again, small annoyances. Small annoyances. Uh, something I would have kind of appreciated early game anyway is uh, you don't always know who exactly will destroy you from afar, right? Um, when you go really close to someone, especially if you're melee, their health bar won't pop up until you're very close to them, and then it might show it's a skull. Although a skull doesn't necessarily mean anything, because a lot of enemies have skulls and they differ in difficulty. Um, so I would have liked something akin to Borderlands, where you kind of like just give a level. Oh, I should not go there, that's a toxic place. Uh, Borderlands kind of shows you a level from what I remember or there's multiple symbols to kind of uh, let you know how difficult an enemy is like do you re I, I should really be avoiding this person or this person I could maybe take by the way there is crafting in the game you can find different plants and herbs mush that up together you can upgrade weapons on a workbench uh, let me show you the skill system really quick actually it's also not that great so you can kind of see this is your attributes is what they call it in this game and you can see at the top I earn attributes attribute points when I level up uh, and you put it in here let's say I'm gonna put 62 strength I'm gonna apply that then you go over to the next tab you've got abilities here so abilities require learning points so let's say I want to upgrade my melee weapons so I do more damage with melee weapons I need a certain amount of strength right and dexterity so that's where you come to this tab and you can kind of upgrade it. I already uh, meet those requirements, so I can do that. It, it takes a learning point to actually put a point into this. Uh, to do this, you unfortunately need to go to um, someone who knows what they're talking about. So like, you need to, to upgrade your combat, you need to go to a combat specialist. Same with survival, crafting, all this stuff. Which is frustrating, I wish I could have just done it wherever I want. It's a bit like tedious and needless to go to, to a professional to teach you. The wording in the game is confusing, because you've got learning points here, you've got attribute points here, and look, you need one skill point here. But it, when it's what it's referring to here, skill points, is this, learning points. It's just saying you it consumes one skill point, but it should be called learning points. Why is it on the same page a different name? And even in the achievements, for example, there's an achievement to uh, get all dexterity skills. Well, they're not dexterity skills, it's talking about the crafting skills. Because here, it might talk about, like, there's another achievement for combat skills, but here it's dexterity skills. Like, they don't know their own wording, they don't keep it consistent, and it can be very frustrating and confusing at times. Yeah, and a lot of stuff is left unexplained to you in the game, you kind of have to figure out on your own, or ask a friend, or look it up online. Uh, which can kind of come with its own, um niche market I guess some people enjoy that kind of it reminds me of old school games where I was playing through with my friend and I was like oh did you find this hidden weapon here or it's like hey do, do you know how to do this thing and um, I mean that's really hit and miss like depending on you might like it you might not like it first of all I should say I really like that the jetpack is here some people said they don't feel like it has a place in the game I disagree I really like it it kind of gets rid of that uh, tedious frustration when it comes to like in games like Witcher and Elder Scrolls it's like, oh, there's a wall in front of me. Let me walk around this long path. Oh, this is great. I've done this a million times already. Whereas here, it's like, just fly up. Who cares? Just fuck that wall, you know? Uh, I really like it. It just saves you time. I'm being attacked currently, so let's get my gun out. Whoa! Uh, why, why, why can't I get my gun out? There you go. Oh, my. Where, where's the enemy? By the way, there is some sort of, like, auto-lock. Uh, whoa, I do no damage to these guys, it seems. Oh my god, and here's another awful thing in this game. If you hit someone once, once in a fight, a friendly, they will then turn against you. Once. Well, time to quick load, because I actually want to talk to these guys and complete the quest and recruit them for the clerics. And same with, like, a melee weapon, you might be locked on to a certain enemy, and uh, you do, like, your special spinning attack, and another guy, like, a friendly, just kind of walks in, and you hit him once, now he hates you. That's really frustrating. Uh-oh, 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 I hit a guy. Once I hit someone during a fight and they weren't pissed off at me afterwards. So I'm not sure if there's some sort of weird system that just doesn't always consistently work. But who knows. The death of Galar will change his story. Okay, did I fucking kill him? God damn it. Let's just try talk to him now before people fight us. Hey dude, I've come here to invite you to Ignadon to become a cleric, quickly! <laughs> the Zerka sent you out here to die, the clerics offer you salvation. Become a cleric? Me? No, no, no. 
technology can only lead to the end of our world. We have to put this planet back to how it was, not dig more of it up to build machines. No, you've picked the wrong guy. You're not taking me back to Ignadon. Well, oh my god, you'll join the clerics or I'll burn, bury you here. Or I can suggest him. Uh, let's just do it the fair way. You'll be paid well. I don't care how many shards you offer. I can't be bought. I'll serve my punishment and return to Goliath when <laughs> This is people dying behind me. Alright, let's just do a suggestion. Let's just show it to you guys. This isn't a debate. You will join the clerics. But... The clerics are your family. <laughs> you will join them and start your life again. You... Alright. I am a cleric. Once there, you'll begin your training. Just don't give them any trouble. Understand? Yeah. Sure. I understand. I feel bad now. The problem is, you saw sometimes you have options in the game, sometimes you don't. Like, there it was either suggest to him or beat him up. So I couldn't just go back to the clerics and be like, Hey, um, this guy didn't want to join. Or, hey, this guy, I was recruiting him but he died and you lie. Well, <laughs> I mean, now I'm not lying because he fucking died. <laughs> Even though he was gonna be recruited. Uh, and a lot of the times my character will kind of talk for me where it's like, he's like, let's say I'm playing a good guy and my guy's kind of rude. And it's like, well, I wouldn't have said that personally. Uh, so sometimes I feel like it takes control out of your hands in an unfair way. Uh, by the way, this quest is mildly interesting, but there's a lot of other ones which get really cool uh, later on. For the most part, the game has been pretty good at not giving you like kind of just boring fetch quests, like, I'll go do, give this guy some bread. <laughs> <laughs> come give me some bread like there's been two or three of those more or less but nothing much more than that uh, also I should commend the game at making exploration fun I explored for a really long time like every single time I found a house or whatever this one I think I've already looted uh, a lot of the times like you find uh, interesting writings or like uh, a really cool weapon which is good for you especially like, you know, I was talking about how the game is hard, and I didn't join a faction for a very long time, until I pretty much completed all the side quests that I could. Um, and it was very rewarding to find just, like, a piece of armor or a really good axe. And it's like, oh, yeah, and it, I found that all through exploration on my own, because no quest will ever send you there. And also, another thing I should really commend, uh, I feel like the entire world is very unique. Like... I don't ever go somewhere and feel like, oh, I've already been here before. That happens a lot in Bethesda RPGs. Like, you enter a place, it's like, this is a copy-pasted. Or even, like, I think Dragon Age 2 it was. I remember thinking that a lot. This has been, like, I don't know, everything feels handcrafted. Everything. Uh, I mean, okay, you might find, like, some occasional, uh, uh, like, it's, let's say you go into a Berserker village. It's like, okay, they make their houses the same, so you're gonna find it the same, more or less, in every Berserker village you go to. Um, but the actual exploration, like the caves maybe, or the terrain and maps and all that, everything like is memorable. When you get to a place, you remember it, if you come back to it. Uh, so, and that happens quite rarely in RPGs, so I honestly, I've been really enjoying just exploring in this place. By the way, the music is really nice, and uh, I'll probably show it off in the outro. The White Prongs of Magalan. I wish I knew what they were for. Oh, she's talking about these, <laughs> the wind turbines? That's funny. Okay, my gun does nothing to him, so I'm gonna go with a bit of this. Uh, one thing that actually frustrated me, like I was talking about how the game kind of forces you sometimes into uh, certain decisions. That also comes into play when it comes to skills, which you wouldn't really expect. Um, hang on, let me just kill this dude. Uh, there you go. Uh, so you can see here, I mean, it was already a little bit of a struggle to kill him, but barely. Uh, but I told you the first early part of the game, it sucks, man, like, you are getting destroyed, which, I mean, it's fun for a while, uh, but the game kind of forces you into going into strength and constitution and dexterity, these are, like, skills that allow you to wield any, if you want anything that does damage or protects you with armor, you need to have a decently high strength and constitution, which means, which allows you less to kind of put points into intelligence and cunning, which can be used for social skills, like in Fallout, for example, I love just upgrading my speech all the way from the beginning, so I'm like a smooth talker, you know? There's a fight, I can usually talk myself out of it. And even then, even in Fallout, like, I don't feel useless. I put all my points in, um, let's say, speech and lockpicking and stuff like that. I haven't put any in energy weapons and guns, and although that might help me become a bit stronger, I can still totally fight people off without it. 
so I wish I felt a little bit less forced into kind of building up my strength. Uh, like, what if I want to roleplay, you know, a charmer and stuff like that. So that was pretty frustrating. And also, another thing, a big problem I had personally had, and I kind of forgot to mention this whole time, you start off the game, like, around here, right? Uh, let me use the mouse because it's less horrible to look at. Uh, you start off around here, which is in Berserker territory. You are you are found and, uh, dis and talked to by a Berserker. He brings you to his Berserker village, and you start... This is your first kind of contact with humans over here in the Berserker village. And it's the first faction you're brought into contact with. And then the game is like, hey, join a faction. And it's like, okay, so my choices are either join these guys because, hey, I'm already here, right? I want strong weapons and I want stuff like that. But if you want to join the, the outlaws or the clerics, the outlaws, you're going to have to walk all this way, all this way here. And you, I, I, I've done that, by the way. I did that before joining these guys because I wanted to see. Like, I wanted, to, I wanted to kind of have an understanding of all the other factions. I walked all this way, very long distance. Can't kill a single enemy. They're all destroying me. This is the only way to get to the fucking outlaws. And so then I talked to them and whatever. And the clerics, it's even worse. You either have to walk all the way here, which would be really stupid. But I don't blame you for doing it because it's not very obvious. Or you can come here to this domed city. And when you come to this teleporter, it can teleport you here. No other teleporters in the game do that, by the way. It's the only exception, and the game does not really tell you that until you get to that situation. Uh, so, yeah, you're either faced with, well, I either gotta struggle like crazy and discover the other factions, or I'm gonna join the Berserkers because, I mean, I already have contact with them. So, I personally didn't like that. If anything, the game should have started you like smack bang in the middle. Someone finds you, someone who's neutral to all the factions, and they're like, hey, you should probably join a faction, and then you can decide, and you can go in any direction you want. That's what I felt. Uh, I felt the game was heavily suggesting I go Berserkers. And even the first main mission, I didn't complete it for ages, because it was so difficult. I, and not because I'm not skilled enough, but because people one-shot me, and I do, like, a pixel of damage to them. Sometimes not even any damage, any visible damage. And I couldn't do the main mission for ages because I had no weapon, because I didn't join a faction, because I was like, well, I don't want to join the Berserkers immediately, I want to talk to the other guys first. And here's a quick example of hacking a lock. Uh, am I not thoughtful that I made these saves just for you? <laughs> so you can either find the code and input it, or you can hack it. This is a pretty interesting system, actually, and I find it quite a lot of fun. Okay, I, there's a timer, so I've got to think quickly. You've basically got to find the right combination of numbers. So you can see the first and the second number should match each other. So I'm going to put 5 and 5, let's say, and uh, the 5 is smaller than the next number, let's say 7, and then the 7 is bigger than, let's put a 1. I'm going to press enter. Okay, they're all wrong. <laughs> Alright, let's do 4 and 4, and then we're going to do 6 and then 3. Okay, so the green is correct, and this, the yellow, so the 6, is correct, but not in the right place. So there's only one place left, so I'm going to put the 6 here. And then there's only two more options that can be bigger than 4 and 6, so we're going to do 8 or 9. There you go, and I did it. So I really like that, it's a fun little mini game, and uh, quite a clever way of doing, uh, you know, hacking. Join or I'll kill you. <laughs> Think about it, they pay well, and your job here is done, it is time to leave, you will join the clerics. Well... Again, I have no choice to not do it. I mean, I kind of understand like you can't have complete freedom in everything. I get it. Um, but, yeah, I still feel a little bit forced. Um, like, here I can't really roleplay as someone who joins the clerics kind of undercover. Like, hey, I just want the weapons, but I don't really believe in Kalan and their god and all that. Alright, let's just try pay him and see. Think about it. They pay well. You're just about surviving here. You don't want to end up like Scrappy. Scrappy is like that because he joined a faction and they screwed him over. The clerics will just do that to me. If you need proof, I can give you some Alexit. An advance? You mean you'll give me Alexit? Just like that? As proof of their intention. Okay. But I'm not saying I'll join. I need to think. Alright. Sure, 100. Take the Nothing. Alexit and swear loyalty to the clerics. Alright. I guess it is time for a change. I'll do it. Good. So, what now? You'll be collected in a few days. A group will take you to the Hort. Okay? Yeah. I'll be ready. Good. You won't regret it. Cool. Alright, let's turn in our mission. The Initiate Connor should arrive here soon. I've been told that he's already here. But they're not letting him into the Hort. 
He's been stopped at the gate. Have you any explanation for that? No. Then you'd better go down to the gate and find out what's going on. Okay. Un unseen complications. Or unforeseen, I should say. Yo, what's up, Connor? Which was this guy? He was the one... Alright, he accepted. I just paid him. I thought you said I was sent for. Now I get here, and that idiot at the gate won't let me in. Do they need me or not? Make your mind up. <laughs> Do you have anything to sell? <laughs> Alright, let's talk to this guy. Why wouldn't you let Connor into the horde? Because Connor matches the description of a guy who ambushed one of my merchants. I can't prove it. That's why he's still walking around breathing. But I can't let him in. And if it is him, do we really want someone like that joining the clerics? So you're refusing Baldur's order. Or, so the only reason you won't let him in is because of this ambush? Let's just do this, because this will probably like make him feel a little bit pressured. So you're refusing Baldur's order? I'm not refusing anything. The order says we must seek out and welcome new initiates. But you're only an initiate once you're inside the Hort. He's not in the Hort. So he's not an initiate. So I don't have to welcome him. End of story. Get him out of my sight. Dead or alive. He could work for the Claws. Him? You don't even know him. I'm vouching for him. And if he causes problems, Claw rules. You can kill him. Hmm. You're right. Then I'll hold you to that. Send him in. Just for some context, the Claws are like a secret organization that I kind of managed to stumble upon uh, and this guy works for him. So I'm curious how this would have panned out if I didn't discover the Claws. So overall, I mean, you know, this is only a glimpse of what the game is like. I showed you, I really appreciate all the different types of environments. The writing is pretty good for the most part. The story is actually quite interesting, the main story. Uh, I mean, I'm on my second playthrough now, so that should show you something. Yeah, the characters are pretty well written, the voice acting can be iffy every now and again, it's okay for the most part. The gameplay, although not incredibly skill based, can still be satisfying. Uh, just the timing with the melees and the shooting, uh, I mean yeah, it, it's pretty hit and miss depending on if you'll enjoy it or not. Again, not skill based, kind of artificial difficulty. Uh, but it re feels rewarding in other ways, just kind of to have your character become stronger over time, even though you're not necessarily getting better as a player, uh, your character can finally kill shit. But yeah, honestly, I mean, the story, I, I, I do like the setting of the whole factions, and the story gets pretty interesting. I don't want to say anything about it, obviously, because that would be spoilers. Um, but yeah, I think if you are interested in what you've seen here, you should definitely pick up the game. I've had a lot of fun, I've spent like 70, 80 hours on it so far and I'm gonna play even more, I wanna do all the faction playthroughs, uh, I wanna get all the endings, uh, all that stuff. But yeah, that should do it. <laughs> a lot to talk about, but we got through it. Thank you so much for watching either the whole video or if you skipped through, I don't know. Uh, please don't forget to like the video if you thought it was interesting or enjoyable, maybe share it with someone who might be interested in the game and wants to kind of learn about it. And if you're new to the channel, click subscribe, I do all sorts of types of videos. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Goodbye, I love you!